On the 18th of July, the Jews of Rodos were assembled in the Aronitica, where my grandfather was killed by the Nazis. The deportation began on the 23rd of July, 1944, first of all by boat until the Piray, and then by cattle wagon until Auschwitz. This was the longest and most horrific journey in the history of deportation, which lasted 23 days. My grandmother died and her body was kicked out along the railway somewhere in Czechoslovakia. We were 2,000 people deported from Rhodes in July 1944. Only 150 came back from this hell. These days in July were particularly hot, 40 degrees outside. Sometimes it reached 60 degrees inside the wagons. The smell was unbearable. We were squeezed against each other and could hardly breathe. In these conditions, I marked my 17th birthday. I didn't understand anything. I felt only horrible pain all over my body. The worst was to see my parents humiliated and to be helpless. This journey was a torture that we had to endure only to arrive to our destination and be massacred. I arrived in Auschwitz on the 16th of August at 10 o'clock in the morning. At 2 in the afternoon, I was an orphan of mother and father. Later, I found out that this train was the last train that departed Jews from Rhodes. On the 16th of August, we arrived in Auschwitz-Birkenau. I lost my name, Mathilde Cohen, to become just a number, A2. Four two six one. I am the only survivor of my entire family. Twenty two members of my close family died during the Shoah. People ask me if I hate Germans. Definitely no, I hate the Nazis. On the eighteenth of january nineteen forty five began the march of death. We walked through some hundred kilometers in the temperatures under minus 18 degrees. Then we were loaded onto the cattle wagon with no roof and driven for four days and nights. We were exhausted, but had to continue as these who couldn't move were immediately killed. I cannot tell you what I saw and what I experienced during this march. Only bodies scattered along the road, abandoned without any burial. One often asked me, what does one feel like being a survivor? I have to define it in one word, and I would say nightmares. In my nightmares, I hear the noise of the ventilators of the gas chambers. This noise is inside me. One part of me will stay there forever. We kindly ask Mathilde and her son Leon, as well as Alberto and his granddaughter Diana, to light this candle in memory of the beautiful Jewish community of Rhodes, which was completely erased. Please. Henri Elberg was a young teenager known to his friends by his nickname Chill, living in Belgium when his life would change forever in August 1942. Chill was part of a convoy number eight. Out of 1,800 people from this convoy, only eight people returned. He survived by miracle being sent from one camp to another, nine camps in total. 
It was at Auschwitz-Birkenau that he learned that his entire family was exterminated and where he witnessed with horror and relentless killing machine the continuous stream of people destined for the ovens. Henri recalls, there were eight ovens that couldn't cope with the rate at which they had to burn bodies. It was incessant, ongoing, never ending. I survived because of a miracle. During a deadly selection, I was pushed from the line of death to the line of slavery. When I think of that moment of luck, I still have shivers running down my spine. Henri was liberated by the Americans when he was 20 years old. For the next 52 years, he made it his mission as a Belgian Jewish Holocaust survivor to educate the young people about the hell he survived and refused to let happen again. Henri is 86 years old today and actively continues his quest. Can you imagine the courage that a Holocaust survivor needs to go back to Auschwitz-Birkenau as Henri and his friend Alberto Israel keep doing? They accompany groups of young people and explain to them what anti-Semitism and racism can lead to. To the students who ask him, Sir, but how did you survive this? Henri turns up his sleeve and shows them the number. He tells them about the family and friends he lost. And he concludes, I will continue to tell my story until my last breath. We are honored to have Henri Elberg with us and ask him to light a candle in memory of the Jewish community of Belgium. Please, Henri. While we remember more than six million Jews who perished during the Second World War, we should also remind the world about other ethnic minorities who suffered at the Nazis' hands, particularly the Roma people. Historians often called it the Forgotten Holocaust. Up to 500,000 Roma people are believed to have died in mass shootings and Nazi chamber hands. This is still Kalman Perk. and it still bleeds. Tonight, we would like to pay our respect to the memory of the Roma victims of the Second World War by inviting to light the memorial candle Dr. Oscar Pockers, on behalf of Jarod Akhidi, member of the European Parliament, who is fighting for the rights of the Roma community, and Mr. Stepan Bosniak, one of the very few authors of the Roma origins. Stepan appeals to the recognition by all states of the extremity extermination of the Roma people as a crime against humanity. He also collaborated with Alberta Israel in writing his book, I Will Never Forget You. Their friendship today is highly symbolic. Please, gentlemen. Professor 
וכולם ידעו שהנסיעה הזו זה למחנות ההשמדה, זה לא היה ספק. אני יכול להעיד שלא הייתה שום היסטריה. זאת אומרת, למרות כל המקום החנוק הזה, הנה עכשיו אני אפילו מרגיש את הריח, ובכל זאת אנשים שומרים על צלם אנוש. הרכבת התחילה לזוז, ופה קרה דבר מפתיע. אחד האנשים רץ לאשנב, ובכוח בלתי רגיל קרע את חוטי התיל מהאשנב הזה, וניסה לדחוף את עצמו, ולא יכול היה. הייתי אז בגיל 14, מאוד רזה, כמו רוב האנשים במחנה הגטו. ואימי אמרה, אם יהיה מישהו שיישאר בחיים ויוכל לספר את מה שקרה לנו, זה יהיה אתה. אבי אמר, כן, אתה הולך. והוא, בדרך המחושבת שלו, קם ומרים אותי, ו... ולא רק זה, והיא אומר לי, אני אוציא אותך עם הרגליים, תוציא את הרגליים. מה איתך, את הרגליים? ואני זוכר את התנועה הזו, כי התנועה הזו ממש בנפשי. סיבבתי את ראשי ורציתי עוד חיבוק, עוד משהו. הפרידה נוראית. כל מי שאהבתי הולך למחנות ההשמדה. ובמקום זה, בצורה מאוד רגועה, כנראה שהוא רצה להקרין בי שקט נפשי, הוא אמר לי, דו זו זיין המנץ'. ודחף אותי החוצה. את אמי לקחו לשטוטהוף, למשרפות, ובאותו היום גם את סבי והסבתא וכל המשפחה האחרת נרצחו, ואבי בדחו עם אותו גורל. הציווי הזה של אבי, שיהיה בן אדם, או זה היה מנץ', תמצאת לי את מהלך החיים, וזה לא חשוב שאני אהיה עם פרופסור, מה שנהפכתי, או סנדלר, או שאני אהיה בן אדם. ואני רק מקווה שעד לרגע האחרון הוא ירגיש מידע שנשארתי, ואני באמת הולך בציווי הזה. We can be asked, Professor Burke, to light up the candle in our right of remembrance. I light this candle also in honor of 71 members of my family which were murdered by the Nazis. Some of them you saw in this small room. Thank you. The fifth candle in our Lights of Remembrance will be lit in memory of Jan Karski, a Polish Catholic and a member of the Resistance who is known to the world as the man who tried to avert the Holocaust. In 1942 and 1943, Karski informed Western governments about Nazi atrocities in occupied Poland. He personally witnessed what was happening to Jews. As in order to gather evidence, Karski was twice smuggled by Jewish underground leaders into the Warsaw Ghetto. Although at the time he, the world remained indifferent and didn't act on Karski's advice, his heroic effort was never forgotten. In essence, his report became a precursor to the global fight for human rights. To honor the memory of Jan Karski, who died in the United States in the year 2000, as well as in the memory of all members of the resistance, both Jews and non-Jews, we invite Leopold Ongar, a prominent Belgian journalist of Polish origin, a Holocaust survivor himself, who last year became the recipient of the Jan Karski's Eagle Award. Mr. Unger will light up the fifth candle. In the name 
of my wife, unable to attend this event. She is the survivor of Warsaw Ghetto, Warsaw Uprising, and Maidanek, where she lost all her family. Thank you. George Perlasco, an Italian hero. Passing himself off as a Spanish diplomat and almost entirely acting alone, George Perlasca saved the lives of 5,218 Hungarian Jews from Nazi extermination in Budapest during the winter of 1944. He was made prisoner after the Russian army entered the city, but was released a few days later. He then returned after a long and adventurous journey to his homeland. From solitary hero, he went back to being an ordinary man living an ordinary life. Retreating into his normally reserved manner, he told the courageous and altruistic humanitarian story to no one, not even to his family. Hungarian women, young girls at the time of the Holocaust, who read in the local Jewish newspaper about a Spanish diplomat who saved during the war, discovered him. That's how the story of George Perlaska finally came to light. Prendere quei 300 protetti spagnoli che erano stati portati via dai nazisti nei primi giorni del nuovo governo. Siamo andati allo scalo merci dove i tedeschi portavano via delle migliaia di ebrei per portarli in Germania, insomma. In quell'occasione mi è capitata una piccola avventura. Ho visto nella colonna dei deportati, diciamo, ho visto due bambini gemelli, molto belli e molto simpatici, avranno avuto 11 anni. E allora io mi sono detto come si può portare via questi bambini, deportarli, magari ucciderli. E allora ho detto a questi bambini, vedete quell'automobile con la bandiera spagnola? Voi correte lì, entrate nella macchina e rimanete lì, l'autista chiuderà le porte. E infatti i bambini hanno fatto questo. Se non che un maggiore della Gestapo è corso perché voleva di ritorno questi due bambini. Io mi sono messo davanti alla macchina e ho detto i bambini sono nella macchina spagnola con bandiera e extraterritoriale di conseguenza lei non può prenderli e lui voleva e ha preso fuori la pistola e mi minacciava con la pistola ma dice questo qui voi disturbate il mio lavoro e io spontaneamente ho detto ma lei lo chiama lavoro questo e allora si è avvicinato un colonnello il quale si è informato di che cosa trattava e poi ha detto al maggiore lasci stare verrà il momento anche per i due bambini io ho domandato ma chi è quello lì quello è Eichmann We invite, now Rabbi, we invite now Rabbi Gershon Mendel Garelik, the founder of the European Jewish Community Center, to recite the Jewish morning prayer, the Kaddish. Is God always God as me, Rabbi? Pyalma di Vrachi Rusi, Vyam Luch Malchusi, Vyasm Purkoni, Vikarim Shirei. Chayechen of Yemechen of Hyde, Hobbish Israel, by Golovis Mancorum Romim. 